Hello lovely people, I'm K3N and welcome to my channel. Um, in this video I just wanted to run through briefly, <coughs> briefly for me, uh, what materials and um, supplies you'll need if you wanted to follow along with my um, weekly slow stitch project. <coughs> Excuse me, that's not a good start. Um, my weekly slow stitch project in 2024. Um, which I talked about in my slow stitch and introduction video. So if you're keen to follow along with that, I just wanted to show you the kinds of things that you'll need, which is not much, but I have to um, realise that not everybody's got all the stuff that I've accumulated over the years. So if you're starting from the very beginning, I just wanted to give you some ideas about how to go, go about accumulating some stuff. So... Um, to begin with, um, I just wanted, yes, I'll start here. To begin with, I'm just going to show you one of my old stitch journals. I keep my slow stitch pieces on the whole in journals. That's absolutely not the only thing you can do with them. I'll talk about that later. Um, but just to give you an idea of the scale of some of the pieces, you see they're tiny, they're small. We're not talking about major, see that against my hand, that little feather? We're not talking about major, huge bits of cloth. You see there, there's only two types of cloth. Uh, no, three types, there's two types of blue. But you see, it's tiny, it fits on my hand. So I don't think you have to go and get major yardage. Um, I think probably the principle... Ah, there's that little square I was talking about with my strange colours. Anyway, um, <clears throat> um, the principle is the variety, obviously. Um, so there's all kinds of, there's only tiny bits, but there's lots of them. That was um, a tribute to David Bowie. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, let me just have another little, see in here there's, in, within this little piece, there's quite a few different, ti they're tiny scraps, but there's a lot of, of different ones. So how can you go about accumulating those if you don't have lots of scraps? So I would say start locally and work, gravi gravitate outwards like a throw a pebble in a pond you know in the ripples so start in your own home um, <clears throat> now I'm absolutely not suggesting that you go cutting up good clothes that you still wear or whatever um, but if you've got a lot of clothes and you've got clothes that you don't wear anymore or your family have clothes that they don't wear anymore that's not a bad place to start I know it's often um, people want to give clothes to charity shops and so on because they're good and that and that's great to do that but there are honestly so many clothes in the world there are billions and billions of tons of textiles that are wasted so I don't feel too badly about cutting up clothes that could still be used as clothes if that makes sense um, obviously you know that's down to your judgment and what you want to do um, if you can't find enough stuff in your own home then you can ask friends and family the same question. Do they have clothes that they don't use anymore or, you know, household linens or whatever? Um, <clears throat> I like primarily to use natural fibres. So if I was going into a charity shop, for example, I would look for cotton, 100% cotton or linen um, or silk and wool. Um, silk and wool are often harder to come by, but cotton and linen, certainly. So I've just pulled some scraps here just to show a variety of things. Um, this is against what I just said because this is poly cotton, but from a shirt. What I do as well, if I'm even if I'm buying, even if I'm out buying, I'll have a needle. Uh, it doesn't even really have to have thread in it. And then I'll just try it. And it, I have asked in charity shops if they mind me doing this and, and nobody's ever said don't do it. And I just see how nicely my needle goes through it because I don't want anything that's going to be fighting me when I'm stitching it. So that, although it's got poly in it, it was actually a bit of a shirt of my dad's. It's still quite nice to sew through. Um, this is furnishing weight fabric, which would be too thick for me anyway to make anything with a seam but it's not mega, mega thick. So if I was going to lay it on and stitch it like that, again, if you try it with your needle, that's lovely to stitch so It's lovely and soft because it's quite old. So that's also fine. This came off an old chair that I recovered. And again, I think it's some kind of polyester, but it's nice to stitch. So you get the idea. This is um, a bit of an old tablecloth. Actually, a friend gave me. Um, 
This is a piece of shirt. I'm not going to run my needle through everyone. This is a bit of a skirt of my daughter's that ripped beyond repair. Um, this is some linen from a pair of my husband's trousers. This came off a kind of throw thing that had all kinds of stripes in it. And again, it's polyester, but it's interesting and it's nice to stitch. And it's better that I've got it and I'm using it than it ended up in landfill somewhere. Um, piece of stripy shirt, piece of shirt, piece of shirt. Uh, this was a silk scarf that I got in a charity shop. And I'm not very blingy, so I'm not really liking the gold down the middle, but the, the body of it is. And it was white, and I've dyed it with tea. I will at one point in the year. I know I keep promising, but I, and I promise I will talk about tea dyeing, paper, and, and cloth. Um, while I mention that, I just wanted to show you here. Here is a piece of quilter's cotton that was given to me by a quilter. I'm also a quilter, but, you know, a, a quilter who buys new stuff because someone had given it to her and she didn't like it. And it's a bit garish, so I put it in tea, some of it, as an experiment. And this is just so you can... Can you see the difference? And now I like it. Again, that's personal taste. Maybe you love it like that, but I like it more muted. Um, the other thing, if you're looking at printed cottons, whether it's clothing or, you know, scraps and things, look at both sides, because sometimes the back can be nice as well, and you can get... There's not much difference here, but it, sometimes you can get almost two fabrics for the price of one. So that's another way to get variety. Um, silk tie, if you're looking in charity shops or, you know, a male relative or friend's wardrobe, <laughs> do ask before you cut up their silk ties. But that's a nice way to get little bits of silk, men's ties. And again, also polyester. You could take a polyester tie, try it with your needle, make sure it's pleasant to sew through. Uh, this came from a pack of remnants of wool scraps that I bought at a textile show, so they were off cuts. So that's nice wool to stitch with. More of my dad's silk shirts. Look for things like this, which it doesn't have any colour, it's just white, but it's got lace, lacy bits in it. It's actually crocheted, I think. So there you can cut, you could cut out the lacy bits to use, and you've got the the white as well. I think that's linen. So that gives you kind of two for the price of one, and it was quite a little small piece. And obviously it's really ripped and torn, and, you know, I might as well use it. Um, this piece was the same kind of thing as that, only it's got stripes in it. And I look for something with wider stripes. But if you could imagine, if you could find something stripy with wide stripes, if you would have in, in this one little piece of cloth, you've got some cream, some green, and some red. Do you see? So if you chose something with blocks of colour in, and again, like with this shirt, which was my husband's, but you see it's really gone beyond the pale. Um, <clears throat> I've got these blue squares that I can cut out, and I've got some blue, and then I've got these blue with yellow pieces, and then here's a different kind of stripe, and here's some yellowy check. So within that one piece of cloth, I've got several different bits I can cut out and get variety. Um, and the other thing you could look for or ask for, and I think sometimes they even sell them, this is, uh, you know, a swatch from upholstery. You know, when you go in a shop that sells sofas and there's a swatch, sometimes you can ask, and if you really smile nicely at them, they might give you the old one. Sometimes they might charge you a couple of pounds or dollars or euros or whatever. But again, I would always check these because they're quite thick and polyester generally, that they needle nicely. And that one does, so I would use that. So that's just some ideas. So charity shops, thrift shops, yard sales, that kind of thing, if your own home and family and friends don't yield enough. You can also look on eBay, because sometimes there, um, people who buy yardage for dressmaking or whatever sell bags of scraps quite cheaply. I've, I know I did that many years ago before I had my own extensive collection. So that's another option. So like I said, you don't need yards and yards and yards of cloth for this project. But if you've got some variety, some lighter colours, some darker colours, you know, you'll have you'll have at least a good a good start. So don't think you have to go out rush out before Christmas and buy it all at once. If you've just got a few bits to start with, you'll be fine. <clears throat> So I hope that's enough about cloth. Any more questions or comments on the subject, you know where to put them down there. Um, the other thing I use, a lot of these pieces, 
one because I don't necessarily always piece fabric together like here. I found one that I did. You see that's just little squares sewn together. More often, let's find one in here. There's, there's a better one. More often I've got a little background cloth and this is linen which has been dyed naturally with something but that could just be plain white. And then I stitch my little, you know, slow stitch arty thing onto that. So you need something as a foundation. <clears throat> There's David Bowie again. Oh, miss him. Anyway, <clears throat> so the best and cheapest and most widely available thing to use as a foundation is some cotton sheet and you, or pillowcases or um, fine thin tablecloths, you know, household linen. If you haven't got anything like that and you want to buy something, you can probably find a big old sheet somewhere in one of those places that I mentioned, charity shops, thrift stores, yard sales or eBay. eBay is a bit more difficult to try it in advance, um, in fact impossible. <laughs> but this piece of sheet here, this is some old sheet but I can see by looking at it it's quite a high thread count, you know it's quite dense. And so if I try that with my needle, it's quite, it resists, I'm, I have to push. And then when I've pulled through, do you see, you get quite big holes. I'm not loving that for hand stitching on, even just on its own. And I can imagine that when I've got layers of other scraps and things on top, it's going to be even less nice. So that, for me, is reject for this. Um, whereas these little bits here, and I've got all kinds of bits, this was a fairly modern sheet that wore, wore out. <laughs> I find that old sheets last longer than modern sheets. Cat hair, of course. Fred Fred's asleep on my bed. If you're wondering if Fred Fred's going to turn up, I'm thinking probably not. I'm sorry. I do think I should encourage him to get his own channel. But this, going back to the point of the video, is nice and soft to stitch through. So that as a backing cloth would be nice. And that's more of the same, I think. So this is some more old sheet that feels soft and is. Sometimes they feel soft, but they resist the needle. Other times, um, like this one, feels quite thick and coarse, but it's nice to stitch. So, you know, it's really worth trying the needle through just to see if you like it because it's so I can't stress this enough this whole project is about the making the process the enjoyment of the stitching with the thread and the cloth it's not about making a finished thing you know it's the the point is the journey not arriving does that make sense I hope it does so try and choose things that are nice to work with so you need your scraps and you need some little bits and scraps for foundation and again they can be you know this little piece here if I can put it in will probably do two four that'll probably do six so that that little scrap there will be enough for a month and a half so you don't need acres um, so the next thing you need which I've now buried under everything are some threads to stitch with and I'm always on the lookout on my travels for vintage threads because I like to use old stuff wherever possible. A, because it's not encouraging the production of new stuff and B, because I just think they're nicer. You know, even this little Silco machine twist, it's not that old, it's maybe 60s or something like that, but it's on a cardboard inner, no plastic. And I just think it's a nice thing and I use it. Um, ditto these. These are, this is mending cotton, um, which I picked up somewhere. Again, probably in a charity shop. It's amazing what you can find. And it's stranded. It's four, four strands, so you can use it like embroidery cotton, you know, thinner or thicker. This treasure is stranded silk mending thread. Um, Brettles Vanilla, stranded silk mending, made in England. Shade Tanzan. But again, and it's got its price in 
old money, which I can't quite read, but I just love it. And when I've used all the thread, I'll probably use the cardboard somewhere as well, you know, the little packaging thing. Um, the Silco wooden reels are increasingly hard to come by because everybody's loving them, and why wouldn't you? But And people often buy them for the reels, but you can perfectly use the thread as well. If you're using it to piece, I always do a sturdy test to make sure it's not going to break anywhere. But if you're using it for decorative stitching and it's not really holding anything together, you can double it up to make it thicker or even, you know, double it up twice to make it thicker still. And you get some lovely colours. <clears throat> and even the plastic ones, you know, the more modern ones. Again, this was from a vintage, um, a vintage sewing shop in the UK where they sold all old sewing stuff and it's plastic, it wasn't very expensive I think it was 50p or something like that um, but the colour's nice um, If you've done any machine work at any point like I used to do a lot of free machine embroidery I've still got leftovers of machine <sighs> sorry about the dust <laughs> machine, um, machine cotton again you can absolutely use that for hand stitching and double it up or triple it or whatever so those. Um, what else? What else? This the this is French mending um, cotton. Oops. Which I got on eBay. I got a big box of navy blue, a big box of black, and a big block box, a big box of white. So look on eBay for for vintage threads. You can often get mixed bags as well. Um, not too expensive if you don't have charity shops. People like to use, in terms of new thread, Cotton Pearl or Cotton Pearlé. This is Finca brand Presencia, made in Spain. Um, that's 16 weight, that's slightly thicker. I, I, it's okay, <laughs> it's not my favourite, because I find it quite hard compared to embroidery floss. That, that I don't know how to explain it. It's quite shiny and not stiff. But I find the embroidery floss softer. But, you know, again, it's personal taste. If you've got loads of this, don't go, oh, no. You can absolutely use that. It's absolutely fine. Um, the thickest thread I'd probably use for sewing with is, this is eight weight um, cotton. I don't think it's perle, but it's something of that same nature. And I can't even remember where it came from. <laughs> but that's about as thick as I'd go. If you don't know about weights of thread... Um, the smaller the number, the thicker the thread, basically. Machine cotton like that is a 50 weight and this is an 8 weight, so this is much thicker than that. It's something I can never remember exactly, but it's how many, how much length weighs something. So it might be, I think it's like a thousand metres per kilo or something like that. Anyway, the smaller the number, the thicker the thread is the main thing. <laughs> Um, and finally, stranded embroidery thread. If you if you absolutely have to go and buy new um, threads for for embroidery or stitching, then stranded embroidery cotton is widely available. There's lots of brands here in France. I buy DMC because it's made in France. I don't think the cotton's grown in France, but everything else happens here. That is um, a vintage one that I picked up somewhere, which is from Bradford. So I always like things with Bradford on because it's where my mother's family were from and my auntie Lily. And that is Anchor, which is a British embroidery thread. Uh, but it's very, very flexible because it's six stranded and you can split it. So you could use one strand, two strands, three strands, all the way up to six strands. So it's very, very flexible. It's available in loads of colours and it's not mega expensive. Um, so if you really can't find anything secondhand or vintage or scrounge anything off anybody, um, always ask. As often people have stacks of stuff in their attic or whatever if they're not sewers and they're just looking for a home for it and they'd be thrilled, I'm sure, if you asked them and explained why you wanted it to give them to you. So always ask. Um, so that's stranded embroidery floss. And then beyond that, so you've got your foundation cloths, your scraps and your threads. The only other things you need are sewing needles and if you don't have fancy sewing needles you can absolutely just use household needles. Um, this is a one of these, whoops, this is my luxury, my luxury, my one luxury of these tulip needles and this is a mixed box of embroidery needles sharp tipped 
and then that's size 7, 8, 9 and 10. I love them. They'll, the price will frighten you to death, but they last forever. I'm not sponsored, I just love them. So if you want to buy new needles and you want to treat yourself or Christmas is coming up, tulipy ones. And I like to have a really thin one. See, I, the, this one's probably 12 years old and I've used it a lot and it's very bent. At one point it will snap, but not yet. I like them bent. Um, so that's a very fine, that's actually an applique needle. I think it's a size 11. And this is a um, probably an 8 embroidery needle. But don't rush out and buy, if you've got needles, use the needles you've got. And then the other thing you might need are pins. Um, and you can absolutely just use the standard, you know, steel pins. Or if you've got this kind with the glass head, also absolutely fine. If you have no pins and you want to buy pins for this, I like these. These are these little applique pins. These are Clover brand and I've had these for years and years. And just because of the scale matches the scale of what we'll be doing, you know, they're tiny. But again, don't please don't go buy it. Feel you have to go buying new things especially. You could even get away without pins at all probably. Um, so you need some cloth scraps, some foundation cloth, old sheet type stuff, some decorative threads of some kind, and maybe a finer thread for doing piecing, you know, just like a hand sewing thread or a machine sewing thread in a neutral colour. Maybe some little scissors. Well, yeah, you will need some scissors. They don't have to be little. And that is it. So I'm very much looking forward to it. It's not long now. Um, we've got Christmas first, of course, those of us who celebrate Christmas. Uh, so I will be ready with the first project in the first week in January, and I hope to upload the videos every Monday. And I say hope to because I have awful internet. I'm really in the back of beyond, as they say. So I'll do my level best to make sure that each week's project is uploaded on Monday. Um, and so looking forward to it. I hope lots of you join me. And until then, I will see you next time for more Cloth Tales. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.